This is the 2019 Rolls-Royce Cullinan, and it is, quite literally, the Rolls-Royce of SUVs. It's Rolls-Royce's first endeavor into the SUV world that already includes models from brands like Lamborghini and Bentley and Alfa Romeo and Maserati. But there are two key differences between this and those vehicles, namely, this is more luxurious and this is more expensive. Just how expensive, we don't quite know. The Cullinan doesn't go on sale for a few more months, and so official pricing hasn't yet been announced. But the rumors suggest it will be priced somewhere between the Ghost and the Phantom, which means somewhere in the $300,000 to $400,000 range. That's a lot of money, but then the Cullinan is a lot of car. It rides on the Phantom's platform and uses the Phantom's engine, a twin-turbocharged V12 with 570 horsepower and 620 27 pound-feet of torque. I borrowed this Cullinan from O'Gara Coach here in La Jolla, California. This is the Rolls-Royce dealership here in the San Diego area, among other brands, and their showroom is truly a sight to behold. Now, O'Gara has this Cullinan temporarily from Rolls-Royce Corporate, and it isn't on sale yet, and that means I can't yet drive it. But I will have a full driving review when the Cullinan goes on sale officially in the next few months. But just because I can't drive it doesn't mean I can't show you around it. So today, I'm going to take you on a comprehensive tour of the Cullinan, which will almost certainly be the world's most expensive production SUV ever made. And I'm going to show you all of the quirks and features of the latest Ultra SUV. And for more of my thoughts on the Cullinan, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've also compiled a list of my favorite used, cheap, high-performance SUVs that are currently listed for sale on Autotrader. Now, I'm going to start on the outside with the doors. And one quick note, I recently reviewed the brand new Rolls-Royce Phantom luxury sedan. And obviously, this car shares a lot of stuff with the Phantom, so some things will be duplicated. But in the interest of being as comprehensive as possible, I want to show everything. And so I start with the doors. Now, when you want to get in, you just pull the door handle and the door opens like a normal car door. But when you want to close the door, it is anything but normal. You put your finger here, you tap it, and then the door closes automatically so you don't have to expel any energy closing the door to your Cullinan. And with the door out of the way, now we move inside, but we're not done with the door quite yet. First, it's worth noting that on the dashboard to the left of the steering wheel, there are two little unlabeled buttons. Those buttons close the doors. The one on the left obviously closes the door on the left side. The one on the right closes the door on the right side. And that means that you don't have to be outside the Cullinan to automatically close the doors. You can also do it from in here, meaning that you'll never have to use any energy to close a door ever again. Now you'll notice that the doors don't open automatically, and I'm sure that's by design. I think Rolls-Royce is afraid of someone parking it too close to something and then power opening the door and then it hits something and then the person is very angry and they'll never buy a Rolls-Royce again. Anyway, moving on to another interesting part of the door. On the door panel itself, you can see it's obviously nice leather, very well executed, but the coolest part is that little Spirit of Ecstasy logo embossed into the leather in the door panel. Very high quality, very upscale. And next, moving on from the doors, obviously, we must discuss the door sills, what you step over to get inside. You can see it's this very nice aluminum finish, and it says Cullinan on it in very nice high quality trim. Of course, it is also lighted. Now, interestingly, the door sill says Cullinan on all four doors. They didn't cheap out and not put Cullinan door cells in the back. So it's very high quality and it looks really cool regardless of where you're sitting. Now, interestingly, that is one of the only two places it says Cullinan in this entire interior. I'll get to the other one in just a second. But before I do, I probably should mention why it's called the Cullinan, which is kind of an odd name. It's named the Cullinan after the Cullinan Diamond, which apparently is the world's largest flawless diamond, which was discovered in 1905. I guess that's an apt name to give to the largest Rolls Royce. Now, our next nice feature comes just on the other side of the door sill, and that would be the floor mats. Look at these things. They are absolutely beautiful. They're this nice, thick carpeting that you kind of just want to take off your shoes 
shoes and just stick your feet right in or just put your face down and snuggle. And the floor mats aren't the only ultra high quality item in this interior, obviously. I'm gonna mention a couple of other really high end things that only the top level of luxury cars have. For example, the joystick to change the position of the mirrors. In your car, it's probably a little plastic dial. You just move it around and you change the mirrors. In this car, it's this upscale weighted aluminum joystick and you move it to move the mirrors in a finer way than in a normal car. And how about the storage area right behind the center controls? You push the aluminum part to make that go down, but when you wanna make it come back up, you don't have to manually move it up. You just press it in and then it automatically glides back into place so you don't have to do any work yourself. Another incredibly high-end detail in this car, just like most cars, this one has dials for the climate control. You can change it to set how much air is coming out. What most cars don't have, however, is leather on the dials. This car has leather-wrapped climate control dials just so every surface you touch is opulent. And if the leather on the climate control dials wasn't enough, how about the words they use to describe the fan speed? It's not low or high or one, two, three, four. Instead, it's max, high, medium, and soft. In the Cullinan, you don't turn the air down to low, you turn it to soft. Another interesting item is the lighting binnacle in the ceiling up here, which is rather upscale. There are four different silver switches that turn on various things. The ones on the left and right turn on your individual map lights, which slightly brighten and dim when you press it rather than coming on all at once. But the ones in the middle are even more impressive. One of them turns on the entire lighting binnacle in this nice mood lighting, and the other one turns on only the front half. Again, this is not heavy direct light, but instead Instead, it's sort of tempered, quiet, soft light, so as not to upset the pleasantness in the cabin. Another high-end luxury touch in this car is the clock. There's no digital clock that's just in the middle of the dashboard being functional. Instead, there's a beautiful analog clock, which on the bottom says Cullinan. That's where the other place where Cullinan appears in the cabin. Now, strangely, by placing it all the way over there, it's actually hard to read from the driver's seat, which is one of the few errors, I think, inside this interior. The other error is the transmission selector. I complained about the same thing in the Phantom. The transmission selector just feels a little bit too flimsy and cheap to be in an incredibly high-end luxury vehicle like the Cullinan. Now, next up, moving away from all the luxury touches and onto some more unusual buttons and switches in this interior. One thing worth noting, this is the very first all-wheel drive Rolls-Royce. And because it's an SUV, it is designed to go, well, at least a little bit off-road. One thing I like is there is a giant button in the center console that says off-road on it. Instead of like six different menu options for which type of terrain you're on, this vehicle makes it simple. Are you on-road? or are you off-road? If you're off, you press that button. With that said, there are three different suspension modes in this car. You can put it in high, medium, or low. Low is designed for easier entry or exit, whereas high is what you would use if you wanna go off-roading in your Cullinan. Our next interesting item, this vehicle has a panoramic sunroof, which is no surprise, most high-end SUVs do. The interesting thing about this one is it opens incredibly far. It has probably the largest opening of any panoramic sunroof I've seen. In fact, I imagine when you're driving it, it probably feels a little bit like a convertible with the sunroof all the way open. Another interesting item in this car, if you wanna change the temperature in virtually any other car, you set a certain temperature degree that you want your temperature to be at. In this vehicle, it still has these old school blue and red sliders. If you want more hot, you sort of slide it over so more red is visible, then it blows out more hot air. If you want more cold, you slide it over so more blue is visible, and then you get cool air. It's a very weird way to do it. It's a throwback to old Rolls-Royce models that used to do it this way, and Rolls-Royce still does it this way, even though virtually every other luxury car has gone to actual temperatures that you can set. Now, our next interesting item in this vehicle, obviously the Cullinan has heated seats, but it also has massaging seats. Now, many luxury vehicles have massaging seats, but this one has a eight different massaging seats modes that can come in three different intensities. So there's 24 different types of massage you can get 
as you're driving down the road or as you're riding in the front passenger seat since there's a massage for this seat as well. Another interesting item, there are eight silver switches, buttons below the infotainment screen and normally those would be the eight radio presets for virtually any other car, but in this vehicle, there are eight buttons that can do just about anything. You can set them to do all sorts of things, including pull up the climate controls if you want, pull up the navigation map. But that isn't the coolest thing about them. Check this out. You don't even have to touch these buttons to see what they do. Just slide your finger over each one and the center screen gives you a preview of what's assigned to that button in case you've forgotten. That's amazingly cool. Number eight pulls up the menu for the spirit of ecstasy. That's the hood ornament on the front, the Rolls Royce logo, and using this menu, you can automatically lower it if you want, and then it goes into its home if, for example, you're driving around in a high crime neighborhood and you're worried someone might steal it. Once you're back in your own gated community, you go back into the infotainment system spirit of ecstasy menu and you can make the spirit rise back up automatically so everyone knows you're in a Rolls Royce. Now, since we've already started talking about that screen, it's worth noting there are a couple of interesting quirks in the Rolls Royce info system, one of which is that you can set the tailgate height. A few cars have this. Usually it's a little manual dial on the back of the tailgate. In this thing, it's in the infotainment system. If, for example, you park this in a low garage and you don't want the tailgate to open up all the way every time you park it, you can set it so that it opens lower so it won't hit your garage ceiling. That's a pretty good idea. Next up, if you go into the safety features settings, I really like the graphics they show because they all show a Cullinan doing something. For the pedestrian detection, it shows a Cullinan like bearing down on a pedestrian who's also like a weird ghost. I don't know, it's kind of odd. Then you have your traditional lane departure warning, forward collision warning, and then you get down to blind spot detection, which is my very favorite because the little graphic that tries to explain blind spot detection for you has the Cullinan signaling a lane change, and it just keeps signaling and signaling as long as you stay on that menu. That is unusually good attention to detail. It's very impressive. Now, a little bit stranger thing this car has is a mode that it has in the infotainment system. That would be tire chains mode. If you have put tire chains on your Cullinan, you can go in and let the infotainment system know the vehicle is wearing tire chains. You're then limited to 30 miles an hour and maybe the transmission behaves differently or it sends power differently. The weird thing is, who's ever gonna put tire chains on a Cullinan? The chauffeur, that's who. Next up, we move on to the camera system. Now the Cullinan has your traditional reversing camera, your traditional top-down 360 camera, and it also allows you to zoom in on any one area, and it sort of shows an image of the Cullinan when you do, but check this out. You can also select the panoramic view, and then you can actually see the Cullinan as you're moving around. Now, I've highlighted this feature on several different luxury cars. Now, nonetheless, it is still worthy of being mentioned because it is just one of the craziest features in the car business. Now, next up, the Cullinan has heated seats, of course, but it's worth noting that it also has another heated item. That would be heated armrests. You can go to the infotainment system and select heated front armrests and have them come on with the heated seat on the passenger side or on the driver's side. And even in the back, you can choose to have the heated rear armrest turn on when you turn on the heated seat. So your butt and back don't have to be the only things getting warmed as you are driven along in your Cullinan. Next up, we move on to the Cullinan's infotainment system volume settings. Nothing particularly interesting in here, except it allows you to change the chime volume. Now that's not all that weird. A lot of cars let you do that, but the strange thing is in this car, it's called the gong volume. That's kind of unusual, but my favorite thing about the gong volume setting is when you actually go in there to hear how loud or soft you want it, it plays the gong or the chime, and it is just the the most pleasant, wonderful chime sound. That's the sound that goes on when your door is open or when your seatbelt isn't buckled, and it's so pleasant and serene, just like the Cullinan. And next up, we move on to vehicle status. And you have my favorite item in here. You can measure the oil level from inside the car. You can see right now, it says the oil level is okay, but that's not good enough for me. I want to measure it. So I click on measure oil level, and then you wait, and you wait, and you wait, and you wait. The entire process takes about two minutes to get all the way to 100%. But when it finally does reach 100%, you can see that it very clearly says, well, oil level is okay, the exact same thing that it said before. Nonetheless, at least now, 
we can be certain. Now, the other interesting thing in this infotainment system is the owner's manual, and that's because it has animations. You'll remember this from my Phantom video if you saw it, but the weird thing is, in this car, the animations still show a Phantom. They don't show the Cullinan, which is tremendously disappointing. Come on, Rolls-Royce. If you're going to show animations, animate correctly. Now, right now, I'm watching the animation for the cruise control, and we're passing a Mini. Ah, we're passing an X5. Nice job, Phantom. Good going. Oh, wait, we're getting passed by a 7 Series. What is this? We can't stand for that. Oh, look, there's a 5 Series going too slow in the pass lane move over that x5 wants to get by come on obviously i don't care what the man is actually saying but this is a good animation it'd be better if it had the colon in it now next up we move on to the rear and we must start with simply getting in the rear and so the first quirk of the back is the fact that the doors are rear hinged and that allows easier access as your chauffeur opens the door for you now just like the front doors the rear doors are automatic so you tap the door handle and then the door swings closed automatically. One other interesting quirk of the rear door, something a lot of Rolls-Royce models have, there is an umbrella mounted in here. You push this little button, the umbrella reveals itself, and then you can just put it up. Now, the theory of putting it here is that a good chauffeur can, in one motion, simply open the door, push the umbrella button, and then have the umbrella ready before the door is even open, so the chauffeured passenger will never have to get wet. Now, moving into the rear seat, there are a few interesting items. One is, again, the fact that you can close the door automatically from back here. You don't need to be outside the car. Press a little button next to your head, next to the rear quarter window marked door, and the door just comes closed automatically. So once again, you don't have to put any effort or energy into it. Another interesting item next to that door button, there is another little button there that controls your power headrest. You can push it up or down, and the headrest will automatically whir up or down to your design desired position, because of course it will. Now, when you climb in here, one of the first things you notice is there's no screens. The rear passenger is just supposed to sit here? Ah, well, that's where you're mistaken. If you push a little button to the left of the seat in front of you, a little tray table automatically folds down and it reveals behind it a little screen. The screen is off, but if you push a little button to the right, on the right side of the seat, the screen not only turns on, but sort of automatically whirs out to your perfect viewing angle so that you can now use the screen in front of you. There's one of those screens on both sides of the rear of this car. So what exactly is on those screens? Well, pretty much everything. Pretty much everything the driver has on the infotainment system. You can change the radio. You can read the owner's manual and see those ridiculous illustrations. You can even get a navigation destination and then send it to the front and kind of send the driver there while you're being chauffeured around in your Cullinan. You also have my favorite feature on those screens. That would be your own personal analog clock because from this position, you can't see the Cullinan clock up on the dashboard. So you have your own clock in your screen. They could have given you a digital clock, so it was much easier to tell the time, but this is a Rolls Royce even the screens have analog clocks. Now, when you're done with your screen, you simply press those two buttons again. Press the one on the right, the screen turns off and folds back. Press the one on the left, and the tray table folds back up into the seat, so it's like the screen was never even there, in case you want a simpler ride in your Cullinan. Now, a couple of other interesting things back here. One is the rear quarter window, which is absolutely massive. This vehicle is a little bit strange in that it doesn't have a window over the cargo area like most SUVs. Instead, Rolls-Royce has sort of brought that window forward so that it's directly next to you when you're sitting back here. The weird thing about that is when you put down the rear window, it's sort of way in front of you. It almost has sort of the profile or roof line of a London taxi. It's kind of strange. And then there's the fact that Rolls-Royce has gone to the same great lengths to make everything luxurious back here like they did up front. For example, even the vents that blow air to your feet when you're sitting back here from the climate controls, even they are finished in aluminum. Even though with the seats in their normal position, you'll probably never even see them. But just in case you do see them, Rolls-Royce had to finish them in aluminum because they wouldn't settle for anything but the finest. Here's a really weird feature of the Cullinan. While you're sitting in the back seat, you can automatically fold down the other back seat. There are two little buttons hidden in each rear door panel. You push the one corresponding to the seat that you want to fold down, and then it folds down automatically. So if you're sitting back here, you want to grab something out of the cargo area, you can't reach it, well, just push that, 
the seat folds down and suddenly you can grab it and you can even put it back up. You pull the little button again, the seat goes right back up and back into place. I've never seen any other car that allowed you to do that from the seating area only from the rear. That is pretty cool. Now, I tried to lower the seat that I was actually sitting in, and unfortunately the Cullinan will not allow you to do that. Instead, it sounds the gong. Now, next up, we move on to the back of the car, where there are a couple of interesting quirks and features, as you might expect, considering that Rolls-Royce doesn't traditionally make vehicles with tailgates. Now, for starters, the tailgate opens in kind of an unusual manner. The top bit opens, and then press a little button, and the bottom part opens separately, so it's a split tailgate. The theory here is you can have a nice picnic on the back of your tailgate if you want. The Range Rover is the same way. Now there are a couple of interesting items at the tailgate. One is how you can open it. You can do what I just did and press the buttons back here, but there's also a button in the front on the driver's door panel that you can pull and that will open the tailgate. Now the crazy thing about that button is if you push it the other direction, it will also close the tailgate, which is unusual. Most cars have power trunk release, but for liability reasons, automakers are scared to have the thing closed, but Apparently Rolls-Royce wasn't worried about that. Another interesting thing with the tailgate is there is a $30,000 option to have two seats back here, two sort of rear-facing outward seats, so you can have a picnic in your Rolls-Royce seated luxury. Obviously, you can't sit in the seats while you're driving, but they're there for picnics or maybe fox hunts. I'm not really sure. Now, there are a couple of interesting quirks about the cargo area that are worth mentioning. The most interesting is the fact that the load floor can change its shape. I'm serious, right now it's sort of tilted up in the back, but if you have a particularly large item, you can press this little button on the top of the lower part of the tailgate and the load floor automatically goes flat, which is really impressive and kind of unusual. Another interesting item, obviously you can drop the rear seats from back here. Most luxury SUVs have that feature. This one is kind of unique in the sense that it allows you to also pop the rear seats back up into place. They automatically go back where they belong if you push the button the other direction, which is kind of a cool little feature. But let's go back to the seats being folded down for a second. Now, when they're down, you can use that button that changes the shape of the load floor to kind of raise it up so that the load floor is now flush with the rear seats. And that way, if you're trying to put in some large item back here, it won't get caught or something on the back of the rear seats. And what that means is basically that the cargo area can transform from being completely flat to being sort of angled with the rear seats, depending on what you need for your specific piece of cargo. And I've never seen that before in any other luxury SUV. Now, a couple of other interesting items in the tailgate and the cargo area. One is that if you lift up the floor in the cargo area, you can see there's a little hidden compartment back here, like a trunk in your cargo area. It sort of hides stuff if you don't want anybody to see it when they look in. In fact, it would hide it from just about anybody, even if you're coming back here, unless you know that it's there, basically, unless you've seen this video. Now, the other interesting thing is because the tailgate is a clamshell, if you want to close it, you press a little button and then both pieces close on their own and then they sort of meet together in the middle in order to be fully closed. Now, next up, moving on to the turn signals. They're kind of cool both in front and in back. In front, it's just this LED line that lights up right below the headlights. And while we're talking about the front headlights, we might as well show what this car looks like with its driving lights on. It sort of has the unmistakable Rolls-Royce look with these LEDs sort of adding a nice accent to it. And speaking of lighting and the turn signals, in back, the turn signals are also very interesting looking. They're upright and very stately and luxurious. They're the Rolls Royce of turn signals. Now, next up, we move under the hood, and there's not anything particularly quirky under here, but I will say it's not often you open the hood in an SUV to reveal a giant turbocharged V12. 570 horsepower, 627 pound-feet of torque. This thing is a monster, a very pleasant, stately monster. Now, next up, another interesting detail back here is between the doors, it's this plaque that says on it, Rolls-Royce Goodwood, and has a few designs and the vehicle's serial number. When the doors are closed, you can't see this plaque, but when both doors are open, you can see it in its entirety, like right now. It's supposed to signify and help you remember that all Rolls-Royce vehicles are built by hand in Goodwood, England. And finally, two more interesting exterior quirks. One is the RR badge in the wheels. I've mentioned this in every Rolls-Royce 
Royce review I've done, but you kind of have to because it's so cool. It's weighted so that when the car drives down the road, the RR is always facing the correct direction so that all bystanders know precisely what you're driving. The other interesting exterior item in this car is the key, which looks fairly normal, like a pretty standard key, except it has leather on the back, so it's a little higher quality. The thing I like most about this key, though, is in order to lock the car, you press the Rolls-Royce logo, which is a small little touch, but it must feel very satisfying to press Rolls-Royce and just walk away. So that's a comprehensive tour of the 2019 Rolls-Royce Cullinan, likely the world's most expensive and most luxurious SUV ever. Now, like I said, I can't drive it, but I will drive it soon and I'll report back. But given the incredible level of features, the amazing amenities, if it drives anything like the Phantom, I think it's safe to say that Rolls-Royce has truly managed to create the most impressive luxury SUV in the world. Tour of the Cullinan, which is uncertain features of the world tour of the Cullinan, which is undoubtedly the most production Cullinan, which will certainly be which will almost certainly be the most expensive. On that note, one of my favorite things to do with the Cullinan is because the seats are split folding, there's one button for the left side, one for the right side, you can hold down both buttons at once and play seat drag race. You ready? Okay, here we go. And they're off. Oh, left is off to a slightly, just very slight, maybe a centimeter total. Come on. Oh, left is slowed down, right is taking lead. Oh, left is the lead back. Oh, wow, it looks like left got down just maybe a quarter of a second earlier. Well played, guys, well played.